God will take me back to running away from the morning. You just want it to, to end. Because you're hours and hours into the race. I always think about run that last bit down the finishing chute a little bit faster. A little bit faster. So there isn't going to be one template that's going to say 50% visual, 50% written. So if you have zero graphic design ability, don't try to teach yourself you know, in design or Photoshop in the next two weeks. I love teaching. I love seeing the success of people that have come through my classroom to go on and operate at the biggest you know, companies, the highest levels. You know, teaching's fantastic. I love teaching. But I never thought I was going to be a professor. I was born without my hand. Um, I did have little balls of skin that would have been where my fingers were. Uh, I had those for about a year. As a kid, I had been given the opportunity to try out uh, prosthetics. And it was through the Shriners Hospitals in Springfield, Massachusetts. It was a tough decision to essentially give them back so they could repurpose the parts. I've always felt a little bit more comfortable working with what I've got. I don't know any other way, and that's a big part of it. For me, having one hand hasn't really changed anything. It's all I knew. My daughter's in fifth grade. My son is a high school freshman. You know, seeing somebody that you helped create start to discover the world, explore what they're into, watching them grow, watching them learn, watching them fail and succeed. There's nothing like it. And until someone has kids, it's really hard to describe the joy that you can take out of the little things in life. It's the best thing in the world being a father. Best thing. The answers don't come as easy as the questions often do. If I turn around and smile, I might be able to make it. Sometimes it's a little tougher to admit, you know, you don't, you don't lead with, hey, I'm going to go hang out by myself, you know, but I do a lot of that, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons I love music, because music is that companion and, you know, I can share that feeling, that emotion with a song and some of my favorite artists, you know, they don't write happy songs, they write songs that really tug at your heartstrings. I was managing about four artists. I needed to focus on Syracuse University a lot more than, than the bands. And so in uh, December, I wrote a really tough email to every band I was managing indicating that I was pulling myself away from the projects. If I gave up triathlon, that would open up more time for me to go back in and manage some more bands. And right now, I'm not in that spot. I can't as much as I want to. Triathlon, uh, this is the year. This is the year where I focus on that. 
September 2010 was the first half Ironman that uh, was going to be hosted here in Syracuse, New York. It was one of those big endurance races and I said there's no way I'm going to let an Ironman race come to Syracuse and not give it a shot. I'd never done a triathlon before and probably didn't train enough for that first one. But I finished and said I will never do another triathlon again. I lied. I met Alf. I met Alf on a bike ride after having talked to two totally unrelated people who don't even know each other. Both had said that I should coach him. So I'm here to prepare him for Iron Man and any other triathlon running endeavors that he has. Which is good. And then with his health setbacks, we shifted focus to the nutrition side of things until he could start training again. When I noticed that my left leg from the knee down sort of felt like it fell asleep for a couple days and thought maybe I had a stress fracture, ultimately ended up going to get that checked out and it turned out that I had uh, blood clots in my left leg and two of the three main blood vessels in my lower leg were blocked. I'm on blood thinners right now, which uh, I bleed a lot. Right now, I'm trying to make sure I've got the best diet that I can while taking the drugs, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to stop taking these drugs. The doctors say, if I crash my bike, then it's an immediate trip to the ER, a uh, full CAT scan, making sure that there's no bleeding in my brain. I've crashed before. So I was training for uh, the National Championships uh, Open Division in Chicago a couple years ago, and ended up crashing uh, by hitting a kid kid, he was like a teenager, uh, about a mile from the end of my training run. It was almost in slow motion. I went over the bars. I remember my bike flying off into the grass, woke up in a pool of blood, and I could hear the commotion around me, but really didn't know what people were saying. If you're logging 5,000 miles a year on your bike outside, which a lot of Ironman athletes do, plus you're running outside, you know, the risk of being in, in a running accident or a cycling accident is even higher. Most people don't crash during Ironman, they crash going into Ironman. His health outside of endurance racing is more important than his, you know, short-term goals. So going to the Olympics, yeah, that's great, but if he's not around in six years after it, then it's not that great because he's, he's still got family and he's got kids and, you know, that's got to be priority number one. I've been relying on
Ever since I was young, I've always pushed myself. You never know what you're made of unless you test your limits. I don't feel like I've reached mine yet. I know what the dangers are, but you only have one life to live, and I don't want regrets. I want my kids to be proud of who I am and what I've accomplished. Because in the end, it's all for them. I do everything for them. The next step for me is to make the 2020 Paralympics in Tokyo. This is my last shot. I'm not afraid of getting injured. I'm afraid I won't be able to do this for much longer. It's now or never. When this moment comes That you've taken this a few steps too far I'll get the chance that I've waited for Since we were just kids Just starting Say you never listen to me